Hey guys, the reefing report will be on in just under three minutes. While you're sitting around, give us a little help. Do a couple shares out in the internet world for reef keeping, and we would appreciate it. Let's get a good crowd in here. Got some great news this week and some fun conversation. Hello and welcome to the Reefing Report once again. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, all you guys out there. Um, hey, girls. You know, yeah. Uh, as you notice, I don't have an aquarium. Where's your aquarium, Mark? I mean, this is the Reefing Report mobile edition. We're both mobile this weekend. But hey, we're still here reporting the news in the saltwater aquarium industry with some juicy stuff this week and uh, some stuff that's going to hit very close to home for Terrence. So if you're just tuning in, share it, like it tell your buddy text your friends because we're gonna have some extra fun tonight it'll be a good one i don't know about that but uh yes it's definitely remote uh, different different coasts and uh although some might in 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 a situation like this go yeah we'll just postpone it or you know put it off or whatever no the show must go on the show must go on so vegas vegas last week for me i was remote this week I'm in LA, uh, and Mark, where are you? Sebring, Florida. <laughs> Sebring, Florida. Yeah, it, it, you know, and and Henry says Mark looks like he's in a Holiday Inn, right? Well, at least Mark has like artwork on the wall. I'm actually in a hotel room, and there isn't a single, not one single picture on any wall in this hotel room. <laughs> it's just white wall all around. But I do have a nice patio, so at least there's that. Uh, but uh, it is in LA, so if you do hear sirens or a helicopter flying over, you'll know why. Um, <laughs> but you're not uh, wearing a mask, Terrence. If you're in LA, you got to blend in and wear a mask. Yeah, exactly. Um, no beef, happy reef, 1 a.m. Way to go. Love it. Okay, thanks for joining us from the UK. Ah, UK. You know, tell, tell your friends and mates um, all, Mate. about, <laughs> all about the reefing report and uh you know get them on here even if it's that time of day but that's how it is uh danny says we need a tour of your tank it looks stunning 
got to be talking about mine. Um, so uh, maybe, uh, maybe eh, not too distant right. future, we'll we'll do battling tanks or something, Mark. Okay, and uh, I I think we should definitely do a tank tour. I should even come out and film it so we document this oh. tank before we upgrade. <laughs> we got to have it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm telling you, at some point, I'm going to have to keep it real and show the room downstairs before I do some work, because um, it is, uh, it, it's, you know, hey, look, it, it it's not exactly like uh, what's his, what's the guy's name that uh, that George filmed overseas? The guy that's got the big tank in the UK. Oh shoot! Oh, uh, Saxby. Uh, yeah, yeah Saxby. Saxby. So yeah. It, it, it is not like that. If, if any of you guys haven't seen the David Saxby uh, video on uh, Coralfish 12G, you need to go watch it because when you see that control room, nothing you could ever do, okay, could be worse than that in terms of all the stuff <laughs> hanging everywhere and there's plugs and there's things and he's ducking and all kinds of stuff in there. It's crazy. Right. But how about that? It's underneath the street outside of his flat. That I didn't know. That yeah. I did not know. But yeah. it it's pretty crazy when you go look at it. Beautiful aquarium. I, I think so. Mine's not that bad, but it's definitely in that vein, right? You you don't want to go back and you know look at where the sausage is made in either of our tanks. But someday you will. Someday we'll make it happen. Yes, soon. <laughs> oh my gosh okay so what else we've we got going on today what's going on in the reefing report today this week etc mark all kinds of juicy stuff what do what we i mean the breaking news which i'll go ahead and say it i think it's the biggest news of the week we have captive bread successfully captive bread not us let me correct that uh Captive bred regal angelfish are a thing now they're coming at some point to the united states we don't know when but they are out there. It's been done, not just first generation, second generation are out. Uh, this is a fantastic news on the captive bread front. Regal Angels, if you don't know them, uh, Terrence, can you pull up a photo? Of there it is. And again, I have no idea why it plays that in the background. I'll have to figure that out. But that's, that's to give you your lead in right there to the, the story, Mark. Well, there you go. <laughs> we'll have to figure that one out, but that's a great entry for you. There you go. Well, if you can uh, pull up a photo of a regal angel. So if anyone. Oh, a regular regal street, angel. Regal. Yeah. Anyway, just so that they know what it looks like. Yeah, that way they can see it. It's adult form. It's like absolutely stunning. Right. There it is. An amazing fish. Yes. And they're notoriously um, hard to keep. I have had a couple clients with these guys and usually they do well. Part of the key is to. The yellow bellies, which usually come from the Red Sea, they come from other places, but the, the kind of old adage is if they're yellow belly and they come from the Red Sea, that's your best shot with them. Um, so I've had a couple of these on clients' tanks. They do well. I have two that I've gotten through quarantine in the past week. I've attempted two in quarantine. They've both been through it. One of them is actually at home waiting on me to take it to a client's house. Um, great fish, but notoriously hard to keep, to get them to eat, to get them to stay happy in your tank. And we hope that being the captive bred, that these guys do much better than the wild caughts. We'll have to see how that pans out. Uh, but this is great news because it's a beautiful fish. Love the fish. You get some mist bars on them, as well as just the blues, the whites. I mean, if there's a fish that embodies why saltwater fish are so much prettier than freshwater fish, regal angel fish has to get that done. Oh, man, period. throwing down the gauntlet on the freshwater guys. But hey, it's it, it's absolutely uh, uh, it's absolutely the truth. It is a, a really stunning fish. A couple of questions I have for you. First of all, you said they come from the Red Sea, but where else do they come from? And why do you think that they they do better the ones from the Red Sea than from wherever else they come from? Uh, they also come from the Maldives and maybe one other place. I know I've seen them in Fiji. Um, I believe they come out of Indonesia as well. Uh, you know, the yellow bellies, as they've said that I've seen yellow bellies come out of the Maldives. I used to was told that only the yellow bellies come from the Red Sea. So part of that longevity may be because the supply chain is potentially shorter and mm. the fishery may be better out of the Red Sea. I don't know that. That's a guess. Um, but I've certainly seen plenty of the Maldivian ones, the white bellies on Diverstein. And I believe that if it's out there on Diverstein, then it's eating and they've conditioned it 
you know, then you got to get it in your tank. That's, you know, a wild card with any fish. How is it going to do in your tank? These guys, you know, if some of you may be wondering, are they going to eat your coral? Probably not. They usually, like most angels, if they acquire a taste for corals, it's usually one or two species. So, like these. Okay, stop there for a second, because this okay. is a gorgeous fish, and uh, there's no doubt that my wife will think this is a stunning fish, and there's no doubt um, my go-to answer to her at every local fish store when she sees a stunning fish is. That's for a fish only system. It's going to eat coral. Okay. So you're saying it's not going to eat coral. I would expect that if it did in about 50% of them that I've kept in clients tanks did, they like one thing. Like I've had one that just mowed down every zoanthid in the tank period. Didn't care about LPS. Didn't care about SPS. Okay. So, so, I, don't, so I don't think it's so, going to eat your acros. That's, that's the main thing. I don't have really any zoanthids in my tank at the moment probably because the ones I did have something else ate and I never put any more in there. <laughs> so the next question is what about tank mates? So I have a, uh, a genicanthus in there and I don't have any other quote unquote angel fish in the tank, but I have my tangs, as you know, is that going to be an issue there? Could be the regals that I've had are reclusive, especially when you first get them. They see you come in and they hide out. And that's how it was my experience with them in Fiji. I mean, you, you might catch a glimpse of them and then they disappear under some coral that's like a rock and you don't wonder how they could ever get in there. But they warm up to you, but they're certainly not a fish that's going to throw their weight around. I have one that was in quarantine with a client's pair of clownfish and the large female clown, um, it was just a regular oscillator. So we're not talking like maroon clown big. That mm -hmm. female didn't like the regal and would beat up on it. I mean, it would pick at it, but just kind of like <clears throat> shove it in a corner and then leave it alone. But that was too much for the regal. Not going to fight back. If they get picked on, they're not going to stand their ground. Okay. So, so as long as they can hide in rocks and stuff and maybe stay away from any of the big fish that want to, you know, have territory on them, they'll be okay. They're probably not going to bother SPS is what you're saying. But they're not, right. if they get constantly picked on, they're never going to stand their ground. So they may be always hidden, not want to come out to eat, and you never get I to see. enjoy them. So that's trade off. Got it. Okay. Um, except when it's feeding time when my other fish are too preoccupied, right? <laughs> Could be. They're yeah. not, a, I mean, I've, I've had good success getting them to eat, but I've never seen one that like you feed and they book it over with everything else. They kind of wait for food to come to them and then they start so eating. So that's one of the things I, I read in this article, right? So we're talking about, right now, we're talking about the captive breeding of the regal angelfish. So we kind of talked a little bit about it, but th there are difficulties with getting the wild caught ones to eat. Is that the problem? Yes, that's, they're notoriously hard to get to eat. I found once you get them to eat, they do eat, but you hope that you get one that will eat quickly and that it's had a short supply chain so that it has a much better chance of eating in your tank because it hasn't been passed through who knows how many hands. So what do you find is the, like the go-to food for this particular fish? The, the typical had, like meaty foods? Uh, LRS and mysis. Some of them, uh, they like the meatier stuff. Um, sometimes LRS isn't quite big enough or the other fish get the big chunky parts of LRS. So then I can supplement with mysis because it's a fleshier type food. And then, you know, more of that blows around. It's easier to get lots of the same size mysis in a tank than just the big stuff of LRS. And I'm not talking about chunky LRS. That's going to be too big. For right. That's the big, guys. big stuff. Yeah. Big, big stuff. Right. <clears throat> so I'll supplement them um, with what they like. Okay. Well, look how cute they are there. I mean, you, can almost, you can't even really see their tail fins there because they're so small. Very cool. And look at the cool face patterns and barring that you see on those little things. It's so neat. Yeah. Um, so right now, if I go buy a regal angel fish at my local fish store, what am I paying for it? I have 350, 500 would be my guess. Really? That much, huh? Probably. Let's Especially local live... fish stores. Let's see what Live Aquaria says. Expert only. $314. dollars mm -hmm. There you go. And so, they say from the Maldives. Yeah. You can get them from other places, but that's probably... Do they have it in stock right now? It says add to cart, so... Uh, okay. So then the question is, what do you think they're going to go for, Captain Brett? Yeah. Good question, man. Um, 
with the effort and everything else. Well, first of all, so there's there's an immediate uh, initial scarcity and desire to have them that will drive up the cost, I would imagine, for the first pass that comes through until that is soaked up. How many is that? Who knows? Maybe it's 100 fish, right? Um, before that gets soaked up and uh, it, 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 it's not likely that the wholesale is going to change before or after that. It's the retail from those that, that what people will be able to charge. I'd say it's probably, if this is 315 and you're saying they're about 400 to 500 in the store, I'm going to say $950. Yeah, that'd be my guess. 1,000, 1,500. I don't, I mean, especially if the conspics are going for three, then these guys I would expect to be under half of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, would you pay that? Would it for a captive bread one? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I'll ever pay thousand dollars for a fish to be honest. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but if I'm paying, I mean myself, if I'm paying, if I have to have this fish and I'm going to pay four fifty for one that might eat, that might do well, that, you know, you know, may or may not be good, or I can pay, you know, eight or nine hundred dollars for not this first batch, but maybe a year later after we see mm-hmm. that everything's good. A comment on that in a second. Um, yeah, I probably would. If I was going to spend four fifty, I'd probably spend the eight hundred. Uh, I would think if there was some proven advantage over it. It's just a, it's just a numbers game at that point for me. Um, yeah. Aside from all of the ethical kinds of things and whatnot, which are also important. But I have a concern over the captive bred stuff because uh, I, you know, obviously clownfish are clownfish, whatever, right? <laughs> um, uh, but when you when you look at what has happened with the yellow tangs, uh, uh, you know, maybe they're different now. But the first few that I saw, and then even some six months later that I saw that came out of uh, the captive breeding of the, the yellow tangs they didn't look great. They didn't look natural. They didn't look the same as a, you know, a wild grown yellow tang for whatever reason. What's your experience? I have two of them in my tank. Um, they're really fun because someone told me they look like potato chips when you first get them. Cause I got them. They were three quarters of an inch. They were tiny and they're translucent. You could see right through. Yeah. Them. You can it see right crazy. through tanks. That's yeah. what happens. It's part of the, the way that they grow. They start out like that. Yeah, but they're now they're two to three inches and they eat like pigs and they cruise around my tank. They look totally normal and you would never know. Hmm. Okay. All right. So maybe no, I know, maybe I know that they start to... out different, right? That's like yep. any kind of tang, you know, even a hippo tang or whatever. There's you've probably seen that that translucent hippo tang picture in somebody's hand yep. that goes around the internet and everybody's like, Ooh, a new translucent fish. You know, no, it's just how they grow. Okay. Um and, and so I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about after they've already cleared that stage and they just, they just look like they have a different appearance to me in terms of their coloration. And then, you know, some of the stuff around the head and whatnot, but yeah, I, it, so it, again, back to the regal angel fish, if they are going to look the same or even look a little bit better, cause there's some cool miss bars that yeah. come through. Um, maybe it like writes my initials on the side or something. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, because they do that weird stuff in China with some of the freshwater well, fish. I mean, so that was the question I was going to have for you. Like, maybe we get good enough with this captive breeding that then we can selectively breed for miss bars, and then it becomes a different class of regal angels. Because then you can pick out, you know, right. you're going to get thirty miss bars a year. It's you don't have maybe, to wait on the ocean to give you one. And maybe, and yeah, and maybe we can actually get like a mule. We'll take like a. a a percula or a tomato clownfish and we'll mix it with a with a regal angel but then it wouldn't look natural now you I'm, wouldn't want one in your tank terry now i'm going a little bit too far i get it okay all right well anyway this is good news anytime we see any kind of uh you know a captive breeding stuff it's really good news um it, at some point we may be forced to this no matter what regardless it's uh it's it's great pr and it looks great uh, that the industry is trying to make uh advances towards doing this rather than taking them out of the ocean, regardless of how plentiful they may or may not be in the ocean. Uh, so it's always a good thing. Absolutely. I'm happy to support it. If I needed one and could get one, I would be happy to pay nothing else to start to support the breeders. Yep. Yep. For sure. All right. Um, 
Next up, what's the next topic here? Oh, by the way, let me stop for one second here. We uh, just wanted to thank some of you guys. Some of these stories we're going to be talking about today um, came through our tip line. So you guys want to make sure that you go out on our uh, on our Reefing Report website. And up there at the top of the page, right, you'll see tip us off. Tip us off. Okay, that's where you tip us off. And uh, we did get also our first uh, donation since I'm pointing up there to donation. Uh, last week. And of course, I'm going to forget the gentleman's name right now. I hope he's on the live stream and comes up and claims it. Um, but uh, we did get our first, uh, you know, donation here uh, at the reefing report. And one of the things that we're adding to that, Mark, is yeah. if you become a patron on, you know, on uh, Patreon for the reefing report, okay, uh, we're going to give like a personal one-on-one, you know, within 12 months to you guys, you know, if you support the reefing report and what we do. So if you have a, uh, a question or an issue on your tank or whatever it may be, you can, uh, you'll get a contact to either Mark or myself, whichever you wish, and we'll chat it up and talk about whatever your issue is. Right, Mark? Absolutely. That'd be fun. I love connecting with viewers and I mean, we put this stuff out on the internet and it's great to have the comments, but in a way it just goes into the black hole of the internet. So it's fun to connect with people and remind ourselves what they want to know about because, I mean, I won't admit it. Sometimes you lose touch because we live in our worlds and we're not in your world. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, I really don't know what we're going to spend that $4 a month on, but I've got big hopes, okay? So I need to see that get to be like 400 Mark. So, you know, all you guys hop in there, you know, support the channel. We love you all. Rome wasn't built in a day. The point is it started. Exactly, 100%. And soon enough, if you guys get the word out on the channel, we'll get enough subs that we can actually get some support here during the live streams as well, which would be really, really nice. Um, so that is the tip uh, the tip off area there at the top of the site. So if you know something that's going on, it doesn't have to be a new product or insider information. It can just be a really, really cool topic that you find on one of the forums or even a link out on one of the Facebook groups tip us off with it and we'll give you guys credit for it on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of tipping off, you had yes. put something off this week on up on the site that it you said, wait a minute, this is a problem waiting to happen, which struck me as kind of change, strange talking about the de- frozen food frozen food defroster cup. Okay. Defroster so, cups. Take so it first there. of all, first of all, I said Thaw Cubs, genius, or it's a solution looking for a problem, okay? I didn't say there'd be a problem with them. What I'm basically saying is it, you know, uh, oh, look at this. This is interesting. So their site evidently has some sort of a uh, an issue with uh, their security, their oh, that thing. certificate. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully I can find a way around this and get in here and still get this for you guys. There we go. Okay. So, uh, evidently, it's a thing that people are not happy with uh, chucking a frozen cube of food or square of food into their aquarium like I am, just frozen. Um, And other people are not happy just, you know, uh, defrosting it in a little cup or paper cup or whatever with ROD eye water and chucking that in water and all. That we now need some fancy schmancy solution that strains the food and protects our aquarium from what I don't know. Um, I love Antonio to death, uh, but 18 bucks for what looks like a ladies' compact that strains my food. Tell me why I need this, Mark. Terrence, come on, buddy. You know, people don't buy what they need, they buy what they want. Oh, good answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's. It's been a great product for Saltwater Aquarium. Uh, we have it over there, saltwateraquarium.com. I told Ken that we needed to do that, and he had it made. And it's, I mean, oh, so it's this funny. this is your idea. I it was, it's, I think we probably thought of it at the same time, but I told Ken and knowing, you know, Ken's lickety split on stuff. So we had, he had it going very soon thereafter. But you said, this goes, I mean, do you need it or not? Part of it goes back to how you feed. You said you take the frozen cube and you chuck it in. Sometimes, I don't yes. feed that way. Because I don't feel that way because my fish would it would never thaw and break up enough that I get enough nonsense. food running around the tank. Nonsense. That everyone nonsense. Eats. Nonsense. But go ahead. When you when you have the amount of fish and the different way that they eat that I do, I've watched 
it wouldn't work. So I thaw mine out in a actually a baby food jar. It works really great because they you can label them. So when you're out of town like I am now, you just put your food in there and portion it out, and your fish person doesn't overfeed. Okay, wait so a I, second. Wait a second. Okay, I am the marketer's marketer here. Okay, I'm gonna play the role of uh, of Telegram, Jim Graham here. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Jim, for watching, by the way, and putting uh, shout outs to us out on your channel. I appreciate that. Um, but I'm going to be the anti-marketing for the people, you know, uh, not the man. You know, it's your money, not theirs and all the funny uh, isms that uh, that I hear over there and say. So what you're telling me, Mark, is that I don't need to buy just one of these, but I need to buy one for every day that I'm going to be on vacation so that I can portion my food out for my fish keeper. Look, fish feeders, <laughs> fish feeders always overfeed, always, always overfeed. So you can say, yeah, you can thaw it in this thing and then dump it in this jar and then strain it and put it in there. Or you're just like, look, I'm going to be like, if you're gone for two weeks, I get it. You don't want to spend four, what, 20 bucks times 14. Okay, I get it. But if you're gone for the weekend and you're that anal about your tank, which a lot of reef keepers are, except when it comes to dumping in coral food, that's another topic for another day. It's cheap insurance, as people would say, <laughs> All which right. is, I mean, so do you need it? It depends on if you like putting all the juice, let's call it juice, because I'm in Florida, there's orange groves outside. Do you like putting all the juice that comes in with the food that's part of the frozen food into your tank? Some people would say, I've actually had a frozen food company once get onto me saying that you need to strain it because they said there's puffas in there, you know, uh, folic acid, things like that, that the fish need to digest. So do you want that stuff running around your tank that is maybe coral food? Or do you want a cleaner feeding experience where you can discard the liquid and then just put in the food? Ah. I think that's personal preference. Both work, I will say from experience, especially with like mysis, you've thawed out a fair amount of mysis, you dump the juice, let's call it the liquid, that's a better word, the liquid from the mysis with the mysis, it knocks down the head of your skimmer for at least 30 minutes. It like collapses it because of all the oh, oils no. in the water. Oh no, 30 minutes of my skimmer not running? Hey, look, you and I know that's not a big deal, but someone who's new, be like, oh, that caused nutrients to spike in my tank and then all the corals die. You and I know that that's not how it works, but some okay, people get concerned so about that. I'm gonna put some perspective on this, okay? Uh, this is good, this is why we have this show. So. If you're running a smaller tank and you don't have a whole lot of coral in the tank yet, and you already have nutrient problems, okay, and you want to make sure only the food gets, you know, that the fish themselves can eat gets eaten, okay, then you might want to strain your food. And to me, that's a very, very small percentage of people where it's going to matter, okay? Um, it's kind of like the person who has the... Uh, <coughs> The, the garden and the, the under their trees, the planter under their trees, who then rakes every single leaf and comes back and throws mulch down. Okay. It's kind of like, so I'm going to get rid of all of this nutrient food that can go to my corals. And then six hours later, I'm going to mix up some powder into a slurry and throw it into the aquarium. <laughs> so, uh, and if you're going to tell me that there's some sort of really toxic stuff in that juice, um, I don't think I want to be feeding that food. So, no. They anyway, were saying I'm just they were proposing I'm... it was good. Whatever was in the juice is good that the fish they don't necessarily oh, okay. need it, but it's helpful. Good. So look, I'm I'm giving uh I, you know, I'm giving Antonio and you and everybody else a hard time on this because you know I I have been accused of of being a used car salesman selling air or something of, of the nature of that, to paraphrase. <laughs> so uh 18 bucks for, you know, a little plastic strainer. I'm just uh giving it back. So uh, take it in good heart there, Antonio. I love you, man. You know, there it is. There was some comment on your t-shirt and my hat, by the way, I did put it up there a little bit ago. Um, I don't know what's on your shirt today. Oh, look at that. Very cool. I have a Waldo shirt too. I'll have to wear it sometime. It's a really cool one with ninjas. Did, did you get that? That's the key. Well, it's, uh, it, it's, it's what's his fame with the uh, Tom Hanks. Yeah, it's Wilson. Yeah, it's Tom, Tom yeah. Hanks with Wilson. We found Wilson. Um, uh, but yeah, so there's that. And then, I don't know, we'll see if anybody can guess whose hat this is today. Don't say it if you know it, Mark. Let, let, let the audience guess. 
Is it reefing related? It looks car related. Nope, it's reefing related. But one little tip, it is from a person, okay, who's kind of car related in the biz. Okay. All right, we'll see if anyone gets so, that. But you were, okay, so this is a perfect segment, Terrence, segue, Terrence. You're talking about sticking it to the man and uh -huh. do it on your own and la da 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 da. Someone out there has found a way. There's a nine minute video that we put on the Reef Report, the link to it, on how to make your own Trident reagents. This has to be game over for Neptune. Everyone there is worried. Thank goodness you're not there. Uh, to be honest, I thought just uh, posting this teaser up there on Instagram and Facebook would have meant we'd have even more users on the stream here. But probably what it means is, is that it'll get shared after the fact that much more from the viewers that we have here tonight. Um, once some of them uh, find out about this, this was a, uh, a tip that was given to me uh, out there by uh, Malone. Oh, where is it? Anyway, it, it, yeah. I, I want to give the, the uh, Sam Malone. Sorry, Sam. Sam Malone uh, gave me this. Sam Malone's the one who has actually, I think, done this. Um, and we, you know, while I was working at Neptune, we had heard about it already. Um, uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll put the video up uh, anyway, and we'll, maybe we'll push through it a little bit. Uh, but he goes through and shows how to do a DIY on, let's see if I make this, I don't know what this is going to do. Oh no, I guess that's okay. Um, how to take kind of, uh, some things that you can find off of uh amazon a couple of things and to measure them up a certain way and turn a spinner on and all of that and i've got the sound off because he's got the the spinner bar in there and it's like clicking the whole time it's like annoying as heck to listen to but uh but he shows how to go step by step and and make uh the reagent for the alkalinity component for the trident uh and uh and you know claims that he's got it to work and to be honest with you, I am not a chemist, so I really don't even know how this relates to what was done inside Neptune systems in terms of if it's the exact same stuff or it's not. So I'm not even going to comment on that because I don't know. It's not even like I, I know what the exact proportions are that was done by engineers and chemists and other things. So, uh, But it is interesting that somebody is trying to crack the code, so to speak, and you can go listen to it and see if it's, you know, your uh your gig you know your thing to do kind of a thing you know so you think neptune systems is concerned is this going to lead to less trident reagents sold mm, i don't think so i i think you know i think if it's a diy thing it's not going to be an issue um honestly i think uh uh let me get this back where it needs to go here um i think as a DIY thing, most people are going to be like, you know what? This is a lot of hassle. Why do I want to do this myself? Um, I'll just buy the stuff uh, and, you know, and use that. Uh, I, I don't know. I I think if, if another company were to come out and make this, you know, and do that, I think that there probably would be some issues with that. Uh, but, yeah. There you go. So the other, you said, you said one thing and you left out one thing, both of which raise a yellow flag with me on this. This is for the alkalinity reagent. You still need calcium and magnesium reagent and your Trident reagent pack comes with a calibration fluid, which is useful every two months. You should calibrate it. What do you do about that? That is correct. It does, uh, it does raise into question what you do about the other stuff. And how do they all interact together? Again, uh, you know, I don't uh, proclaim to understand how all of that interaction happens inside the Trident. Um, after all, I'm just a marketing guy, okay? Um, but <laughs> but there there is an interaction that happens, and it is a uh, kind of a Neptune, I'm sure, trade secret as to what the proportions are and how the operation works and how the standards work inside. And I'm sure that at some point they could change how the device reads things or not reads things or change the formulation, change the software. 
all kinds of things that can be done to help to thwart this. Again, probably not going to be impossible to replicate on a DIY basis. As a company basis, any of those kinds of things would be hugely detrimental because you'd produce, you know, 3,000 bottles of something and then Neptune Systems changes it, right? And then all of a sudden your 3,000 bottles don't work for everybody. And that'd make them <laughs> extremely unhappy, okay? So, I, you know, from that end, I don't necessarily think that's going to be as a DIY. I don't think there's that many people that are going to want to do it. And then there is the calibration. Um, mm. I think the calibration thing is, uh, you know, is fairly simple in, in respect to this, which is, what you're what you're most concerned about ultimately is getting in the ballpark and then having good uh, you know precision. And I've said this in a lot of uh, YouTube videos and other things for quite some time now. So if you make up your own calibration solution, by that I mean it's just a reference, right? So you could take anybody's seawater, test it, test it three times, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, come up with the values for that right? That you trust. Now, again, you're testing them yourself. You have to trust how you're testing them. And it's prone to any errors that you yourself introduce in such a test. But if you test them at three times and you average them, right? The chances it's going to be more than 10% off are probably pretty low. Okay. So if you're usually running at 8.5, even if you were 10% off, yeah, so you're going to be at 9.2. It's probably not going to be the end of the world. And most of the time, all you really want to then guarantee is that it's going to be Okay, 8.6 to 9.4, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's and that it's going to be precise. And any of the stuff really doesn't have that much to do or anything to do with the precision of the device. It has everything to do with um, where it's going to come out at, right? At, out of the gate and having to, to align it with some calibration fluid. Um, no, I think it's interesting. I think there's a lot of risk because they're dealing with acids and other things. So, you know, the average person, is it worth it to them? Don't know. Now, uh, Jimmy G said something I do not believe is correct. Uh, supposedly, you can use an API reagent in the HANA nitrate checker too. Oh, I see. In the HANA nitrate, I thought we were talking about the Trident. Sorry. That was something else, I think, uh, that came out on uh, Reef in Builders recent time. this week. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it was on Reef Builders, which was, uh, I read it, and Jake made the point that it, it could work, but there was a lot of variability in it. Sometimes it was off up to 100%. Ah. I was like, uh, then what's the point? Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> I mean, he also his point was like some people are having a hard time getting uh, clinidine nitrate or sorry nitrate reagents. So you could do this in the meantime, and like you and I both know, if you test your nitrates once a week and you happen to miss a week or two, you're probably fine. Especially when you have enough data on your tank and you're not adding yeah. fish, moving things around. You're like pretty sure it's going to be about here. Yeah, plus 100%. or minus ten percent. And it depends. I mean, everything also, you know, depends on like we always know water volume that you have and you have tons of water volume, how things are versus smaller water volume, all of these different things, you know. So um, we do have a winner, though. I didn't know you, we didn't know we had a contest, but we have a winner. <laughs> uh, Solar Sys 14. I don't know who that is because it's a handle and not a name uh, from YouTube says Diablo Corals. So it is, in fact, Diablo that was my Corals. guess. I guessed right. I didn't want to say it, but I guessed right. And it is one of the coolest logos out there, I have to say. Um, you know, being someone who likes looking at different logos, I kind of think this one is pretty darn cool. So I've had it for quite some time. Uh, I'll let all of you know if you've got cool hats, you know, if they're cool and they look nice and whatnot, I'll wear it on the program. So if you know somebody or, you know, in the business, it doesn't even have to be in this business. It's just a cool hat, right? I don't wear dad hats. I'm not, you know, east of the Mississippi. I don't like those tight little tight curled little dad hats. I like a nice big broad brim, you know, hat like you all care, right? Um, but anyway, try to reagent. We'll see where it goes. It, this was only out on Instagram. It hasn't got picked up that much uh, in various places. Uh, but uh, maybe some of the guests here want to run with it. I think I saw some comments on that Instagram uh, post as well from a few of the kind of uh, fight the man you know, people out there on Instagram and uh, we'll see, we'll see if it goes anywhere. Speaking of scene, there's a new webcam out for your tank. Oh man, look at that segue, man. You are so good at this now. Crazy. Now we might get, Hey, we might get that same sound come up. So I got to figure that out. I don't know what the heck that's coming from. It's like in the background, it plays the darn 
Intro music. There it goes again. Across the screen. I have no idea. Well, uh, Terrence, it, it's okay because just like the camera that we're about to show the viewers that comes with the CD, there's probably a help file on the installer CD that you installed the program with, and it's probably on there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, <laughs> so Ju Jewel, who is a, uh, a a aquarium manufacturer and aquarium parts company or, or products company, I believe out of Germany, I think they are the... Uh, one of the oldest uh, mass producers of aquariums in Europe, maybe in Germany, um, over there. They've been around forever, uh, that company. Uh, came out with an in-tank aquarium camera. And don't get too excited, people, okay? Save your excitement, okay? I don't want to get you all cool, like, like, oh, my gosh, no, it finally came out uh, because you're going – to be underwhelmed, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, it does come with a camera that will do 360p, okay? And says 720p, so we'll see. It's got a 120 degree lens uh, and it will work with the app that they have, uh, but uh, no comment on whether or not it works with uh, an Apex or anything like that. Uh, and most other uh, cameras that have been out on the market over the past few years have been flops. Right, Mark? Yes, yeah, sadly, because it's such a great idea and it's just, this fails. For 200 bucks, it doesn't seem like, from what we can tell, it's that thrilling, but I love the fact that it comes with a CD-ROM. If that company's been around forever, maybe they had a stack of CDRs sitting around and they're like, we don't want to throw these away because it's against oh. environmental regulations of Germany. So we're just going to print the... the the, the user manual on a CD and give it to you, which is going to cause more problems. Cause like, I don't, I, have a, I a it's CD like, what, where are you going to put it? Like, where are you going to get a CD ROM drive? <laughs> right. Ken might have one cause he's a computer geek, but that's different. Oh my gosh. I don't even have the latest Xbox. Does it even have a CD drive in it anymore? I don't think so. I don't, I don't Maybe know. I just, it would be nice. I mean, Neptune systems, as many people ask, which webcam works with my apex, Neptune, they did a PAR kit. They got to come out with a webcam kit. This is like begging. You've been there. You got to tell me if that was on the board that Paul has talked about in interviews I've done with him. Has that even been considered at Neptune Systems? Hey, I'll give you the answer. First of all, I mean, how would I know? I don't work at the company. Okay. So you did for years. Oh, that's true. That's true. So I'll give the same answer I did when I was there, which is probably if you've thought of it it probably went on a whiteboard somewhere at one time or another um as many of you might imagine uh me speaking about what is or was internally at neptune system is probably not a good idea so <laughs> i'll leave it at that hmm. well maybe someone will come out with a webcam that works that's cool and works natively with your apex yeah and just CR throwing it out there CR 1988 says, my worry be that lens getting dirty from algae. This is the problem with the cameras on the inside. And I think that uh, it, 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 it kind of goes right up there with me with, uh, uh, to some extent, sometimes the Vortec pumps, which is like, oh, cool, not a wire in the tank. But no, big old wires on the outside, and I still have the pump, you know six inches from the front glass on the side of the tank um it's a it sounds great to have the in can, in tank cam but in fact if you use a good camera like i do and in fact maybe next week when i'm on the show i'll actually i'm actually able to broadcast from one of them um if you use one of the latest uh cameras from wise and just stick it straight to the glass you're going to have one of the best looking shots you possibly can imagine. And guess what? You can still scrape the algae from in front of the, the thing, <laughs> you know, pretty easily. So again, I think it's one of those things that sounds really great, um, but it, it, it's just not worth it to have it inside for all the reasons. Yeah, which is so bad because it's, I would love to be able to look at my tank. Because look, if you put a webcam on your tank from 10 feet away so you can see the whole tank. Unless it's a nano, you don't see much. You might see some fish like, er, right. Er, but you can't tell if a coral fell off or not. Right, right. For sure. 
Um, and I know guys like Dave Botwin, man, he was a camera maniac. And that guy had like zoom cameras with like 30 X zoom, you know, 360 ball action cameras. So he could tell if, you know, if we're clear across the room, 20 X optical zoom, whatever, but most people aren't going to do that, you know, for sure. No, no, but yeah, I agree, which is too bad because it's just a great opportunity for camera in a tank, but we're not there yet. Correct. Correct. And uh, Ron asks, will it work with the apex? The only way it will work with the apex is if you can access the camera directly, not through the cloud, uh, and then access it through your network by tunneling through, you know, your uh, firewall or what have you, like many other cameras that can work with the apex. Uh, the only cloud camera that I know of right now that works with the apex is the Nest Cam. And that's because it's Google and they run their own servers and they don't care about how much throughput, you know, is there and it'll work without even a subscription. So there you go. There, there you go. go. If you so want we were, the, we were, we, go ahead. I say, if you want this camera, you can get it for $200, 50 pounds sterling or $200. Okay. There you go. You may, I mean, you could probably sell the CD on eBay for 50. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, you could, maybe you could like glue it to the side of your tank and then your tangs will want to interact with it, you know, like the reflection and everything. There's something you can do with it. Absolutely. Maybe that's the idea. You shine the camera on this. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's always something. But speaking of there's always something and we're both traveling Terrence, which is a yes. concern for us because if something goes wrong with the reef, especially power, I have a generator at home. Not everyone does. There's the reef box that we were tipped off about. I believe this was a tip as well. Anonymous which, tip. You can't anonymous make anonymous tip. tips. So if you're ah. afraid of being associated with something, like maybe you might want to be afraid of this, uh, then you can leave an anonymous tip. Um, but this is the reef box coming in spring of 2022. Do not or don't be limited with your battery backup, Mark. I didn't know they were limiting. Yeah, I know. It's the box, boxes, you know, two X's that will save you, save you, you so, will save your pets. I looked at the website and I was like, first, it's not like reefbox.com. It's reefbox.godaddyhosting.com, which it was like, I mean... It's always bothered me. Like, if you're going to do a business, do a business, get a URL. But then I'm reading through the website and I'm like, great, let's find out about it. This sounds cool. And yeah. it's like. Well, that's the thing, right? So it's like, it's the first thing is, is reefbox.godaddysites.com. All right. So let me tell you something. Domains cost 12 bucks. Okay. <laughs> it costs 12 bucks for a domain. I mean. I know we're making fun of these guys and it was a tip and maybe I shouldn't make fun of them. But if you're going to, I mean, if the person who tipped me off to this is the person with this product, um, this is just going to be some hard learned advice from a couple of guys in, you know, in the reef keeping business. Okay. Which is you got to, you, you got to do a little bit better. You got to give a little bit more information. You got to get somebody else to take your photographs. Uh, you got, you know, some stuff to do. It may be awesome. And, Supposedly, it's patent pending, according to the sticker stuck on there. I could mm -hmm. not find it out on Google Patents. I searched for it and could not find Reefbox. Uh, I can't find out who the company maybe really is to find out if it's out there because they don't have a domain, so I can't do a who is on it. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Let us know if you find the Reefbox in the wild or if any of you guys are running the Reefbox, but supposedly... It's going to back up your reef tank um, for power outages to keep your pets happy and healthy with water movement for gas exchange and oxygen. That's great. Tell us more. Like, I want to know more about it. I mean, like, perhaps off for getting it that far, but like, this is like the worst Friday night date in middle school ever. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you want this? No problem. No problem. No, no problem. There you go. There you so, go. Uh, what else we got here? Well, we have, speaking of bad Friday night dates in middle school, we have a pristine <laughs> untouched reef found in Tahiti, which I, I think this was cool. It's popped up on the Wall Street Journal. Okay. I was looking at it. I was like, this looks like a big thing of turbinaria. 
but it may be Montipora cap because they described it as a rose petal coral, which I'm like, everyone thinks that's what Monty cap is, but it looks like turban area from the photos. I would take a guess on that. We'll, we'll ask the viewers what oh, they well, think. I'm going to tell you this. Okay. This is the wall street journal. Okay. And if the best you can do is rose petal shaped, uh, you know, coral, your standards have gone way down wall street journal. I get it. It's not financial. Okay. And you clearly don't have your best reporters maybe on the story, but uh, ginger Adams Otis, um, give us something a little bit better than that. I'm sure if you ask somebody who, you know, who found this thing, some, you know, you got to find something, by the way, if you guys want to see the whole story, here's a trick. All you have to do is search for the headline in Apple News if you're a Mac person. Yet another reason to be a Mac person. If you have access to Apple News, you get a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. It's sad that it's not immediately linked there. I would think that they would figure out a way to do that, that you could link through to your Apple News subscription. But since you can't, that's how you can go read these articles um, for sure. So definitely cool. Definitely cool coral news. And with a uh, world where we hear nothing but corals dying everywhere and there are no more reefs and whatnot, to find that there is a new one discovered uh, gives us hope and also tells us how much we really know. There's a lot of underfound territory in the ocean, man. Yes, it's a big ocean. It's it's a big, big ocean. Big. So that's cool. I mean, what do you all think? I think this is turban area. You think that's turban area, Terrence? You think that's Monica? Yeah. I'm looking, it's a horrible photo too, by the way. I mean, you'd think they could come up with a better photo than that too. Um, But it definitely to me looks like Turbinaria because it looks like I can see bigger polyps on there, you know, little nodules and stuff and uh, kind of spaced out. That's why it looks like that to me. Also the, the more frilly edges lead me to believe it's also a Turbinaria. And although Monty's will grow like this as well, this is a, pretty telltale kind of shape in my opinion i'm no jake adams clearly okay so (laughs) he can weigh in on this and i'm going to give it to him because he definitely is the coral know-how guy if nothing else for sure uh he would know what this is so don't know why it's not on reef builders seems like a cool art article to have on reef builders maybe Maybe. he's busy planning reef stock Mm -hmm. that's possible or because it's on Wall Street Journal, you couldn't read it and didn't know to go to the Apple News. But now, so, and here's an insider tip: if you want to see a really big patch of turban area that's probably bigger than that in less water, so it's a safer dive, just go to Fiji, go out to Tabuni, and tell me you want to go to the Cabbage Patch. Yes, and in general, most answers to if you want to see some great stuff end in go to Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> I am dying to get back there. Maybe going in the in the fall. Have a trip plan, a group trip plan. So we'll we'll watch. They're open, uh, but the fourteen day potential quarantine if you get if you test positive is a bit of an issue. Yeah, but if you test positive, I mean, what better place to have COVID than in Fiji? Well, but it's not like hey, you're on the resort, stay here, and you can go to the pool. It's like here's your room, shut the door, don't leave your room fourteen days. Mm. So you're still in Fiji. But it's like, there's the reef. Uh, can't go. But That's it'll be true. there when you're done. That's true. But I mean, how, I mean, if you rapid test right before you go, it means you got to get it on the airplane, right? And, you, and it's got to be enough in you in the nine hours from LA, right, to test a positive when you land. That's a risk I think worth taking. And... Here's some more insider information from a friend who just went. If someone on the resort finds that they test positive, they get quarantined and then they quarantine the resort. Oh, no, that I'd love. That I'd be okay with. <laughs> then you do it. You're like, I'm here for 14 days. It's okay. your problem. It's free. So let's just do it, man. Matangi Island, let's go next month. Okay. I'm sure they're having it's a good cheap. deal. It's $2,500 round trip business class. Never that cheap, ever. Well, forget about business class because we all can't fly like Mark. But oh, I think dude. it's like nine hundred and fifty bucks for a coach flight, and it's like three grand per person, double occupancy, for like a waterfront beret on Matangi Island. All your food included, all the diving you want to do, pretty much all of it. 
boom, right there. Now I just and gave can... away the secret. So if you're watching the reefing report, you heard it here. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell anybody about it. Okay. But that's our little secret. There's more to it than that, but we'll leave that for another time because Terrence, okay. we're at the top of the hour with that. I think it's a great segue because I'm the segue guy. You're the marketer guy. Okay. We'll leave it at that for the night. Okay. I'm all about that. That's good. And uh, I know you got to, you know, you had, you had that one Corona you said, or that one Pacifico? Uh, Pacifico, not okay. Corona because okay. we already have coronavirus. So why do we need Corona beer? So we had Pacifico. So you you are ready to crash after that one uh, that one Pacifico, but big uh, big thanks out to all of our viewers once again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Get the word out. Uh, subscribe to the channel as always. Subscribe to uh, you know to Facebook and whatnot. Get the word out on the forums and whatnot about the reefing report. Help us grow the channel. Show up next week where maybe one of us will be in front of an aquarium again, and talk about more reef Great. news next week. Awesome. Mark? And Anything then, else to say? Uh, no, I mean, the Titans are out, so I'm not interested in football anymore. It's on to hockey. The Niners are still in it, so you can use the excuse of the game. Freeway series, uh, right? It's going to be a freeway series next weekend. Is that right? Uh, sure. If that makes you happy at this point, my football Rams, interest is crashed. Rams and Niners, like dude. Rams and Niners, I think. So that's going to be pretty interesting. So, all right, guys. Until next week, take care. This is the Reefing Report. We're out of here. Later.